Hi, my name is Paul, and today I want to give you an introduction to the concept of dimensions and units. Now, in studying the concept of dimensions and units, you're really interested in a concept called metrology. Well, what's metrology? Well, really, it is the study of measurement, and it's really concerning itself with a couple of things. The first thing is, of course, well, what do you measure? The second thing is, what unit are you going to use that measurement with ensuring that everyone is on the same page. And once you determine what you actually measure and you're going to compare it to, is how would you define that particular measurement? Now, I'm going to give you an example to, the, to help you understand that. Let's say I'm interested in studying the concept of length. Well, I can measure that in a whole bunch of ways. I can measure it in feet, yards, inches, meters, kilometers, astronomical units, light years. I can measure in a whole bunch of things. I'm interested in measuring length. The second thing I'm interested in is, is what will I use as my standard across all these types of situations that are available? What could I, the standard I use? Well, in this case, the standard we use is the meter. But then finally, once we all say what is a meter, what, what defines a meter? For example, I can simply say this and then that may be adequate for a lot of measure, particular measure, measurements. But for example, for precision, I might need something that is far more precise in terms of what a meter is. So a person who's interested in metrology says, OK, let's make the meter the standard. But what actually defines exactly one meter? So that gives you an introduction. Now, there is actually a really interesting history on how we measure things and how we got to the measurements that we have. I'm going to produce a separate video at a later stage about the history of metrology, and it's quite an interesting story. But this is not the place. I just want to introduce you to the concept of dimensions and units in terms of what we measure and how we measure and what the units are that we use as a standard across the board. Now, I've already mentioned length as a thing we measure. What are other things that we measure? Well, length is one, time is another. Then I could have mass, I can have velocity, I can have force, I could have temperature. Now, you can see I have a whole thing I can be measuring. Now, that's a dimension, something you can measure. What can we measure them in? Well, they're the units that we measure them in. Now, I've already mentioned a few. Apart from the meter, we have the inch, we have the foot, we have the astronomical unit, we have the light year, and there's quite a few that I could mention. Time, well, obviously, I can talk about a year, I can talk about an hour, I can talk about a second, I can talk about a day. Again, different units that we measured our length time in. Mass, well, I can talk about my gram and my kilogram. I can talk about a pound. I can talk about a bushel, which is an ancient way of measuring mass of something. And again, there are others that I could use as, as well. What about velocity? Well, we have miles per hour. Obviously, we have kilometers per hour. We have meters per second. We have knots. Again, a whole bunch of way of determining velocity or describing velocity. Force, again, we have the Newton. We can also talk about pound. Pound can be used in terms of the force. Uh, and then temperature, of course, we have our degrees Celsius, we have our degrees Fahrenheit, and we have our Kelvin. Now, you'll see here that the way you talk about the dimensions can be in a variety of different ways. So if I got together with a number of people across the world and said, let's talk about their mass, and I started to say, well, how did you measure the mass of, let's say, some object that we are studying together, you actually might actually come up with different numbers. And then you realize, well, it's not because we have measured them incorrectly. We've just used different units. So if I used kilograms and you used pounds, you're going to get a different number, even though you were talking about the same thing. Same with velocity. If I start talking to, let's say, a person from America and to say I'm traveling at 55, well, in my world here in Australia, 55 kilometers per hour is actually relatively slow. But at 55 miles per hour, well, that's actually more closer to sort of fast highway speeds. Again, we're dealing here with the same number, but different units means actually means different things. So what we need are units that we all are agreed on. Now, the the history again to how those units can be agreed on has a long history and I mentioned to you that's actually discussed 
in a, a future video. But in essence, our units that we use as a standard is a system that is an international system of units that was developed in France and was initially based on the metric system which was developed towards the end of the 18th century during revolutionary France time. But it eventually became the system called the Système International or the SI system or international system. So it's basically a set of units that we use. If we were to work out which ones are the SI units, then length, mass, uh, the meter is our SI units. In time, the second is used. In mass, the kilogram is used. In velocity, now velocity is what we refer as a derived unit, that is it's based on some basically fundamental unit and velocity is a displacement over time or length over time so it actually becomes a relation to length and time so it becomes the meter per second. The force is actually kilogram meters per second squared due to F equals MA but we've now renamed that value kilogram meters per second squared as the Newton. And in temperature Again, the Celsius and Fahrenheit scales were actually developed but allowed for negative values, so they're actually not useful in terms of a SI units because a negative 5 will have a different meaning to positive 5, but numerically they're actually the same, just in negative or plus. So we need something that is an absolute value, so we have the Kelvin scale in that case, and that's being our SI units. There are other others as well, so for example, momentum is measured in kilograms meters per second or newton seconds. You can see it's a derived unit. In this case, it's based on a fundamental unit that we have above here. If I were to talk about uh, volume in terms of solids, well, it's based on length, so therefore we use the meters cubed. Though strictly speaking, in terms of liquids, we, became, we actually make the litre, which is actually a tenth of a metre by a tenth by a metre by a tenth of a metre. In liquid case, we use the litre in that case. In this very brief introduction, I hope that has helped you understand the concept of what dimensions are and what units are and why we use our SI units as our standard across the world when we're measuring these things, particularly in scientific situations. Please like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. And do stay tuned to my video where I'll discuss a little bit more of the interesting history behind how all these things have developed. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.